Hi there! Today we're going to talk about quantum field theory. I know this one gets a little bit tricky for most people, so let's dive in and figure it out. So what is a field of quantum nature? Well, in this case, you can think of it like a layer or a fundamental foundation of our reality. If you remember the graphic about gravity and the placement of mass, uh, you notice that there is a disturbance which then creates gravity in space-time, right? So the same warping is a, well, visualization of warping is uh, essentially the idea that particles are a disturbance in the field or the quantum field. And for every single quantum particle, according to the standard model, there is a quantum field that correlates to it. So, if we have a quantum field that is disturbed by something, we have a particle. It doesn't seem too hard to understand quite yet. What's really interesting is that these disturbances are like vibrations. And it is thought, this is a very interesting one, it is thought that when an electron releases a photon, what it's doing is it's creating a vibration that also creates a disturbance in the photonic field, or photon field, which then a photon is born. This vibration idea is very similar or akin and neatly fits with string theory, which essentially states that if the string is vibrated at the right frequency, a particle is born. So, for example, a muon neutrino, if the string is vibrated at the right frequency, boom, or a graviton, or a gluon, a photon, etc. Now, mind you, all of these layers within the quantum field theory coexist together simultaneously. But how can that be, and how can everything maintain itself? It's very crazy. Well, let's first go into spin and briefly talk about that to kind of give an idea that every single layer does have a conservation of rotation, momentum, etc. For example, with a spin of one, you have a vector form of spin, which means directional that is related to the space around it. And a zero spin would be that it has no relation to the space around it. You could twist the universe like a snow globe and its position and relation would not change whatsoever. It doesn't care about space. Now, here in the standard model, we have a great number of different particles, which, again, are all waves. Don't forget. They're all waves. Only until they are observed do they become a particle. So, for example, the Higgs boson that was discovered has a spin of zero, and this was the holy grail for the standard model. Now there are here the gluon, photon, Z boson, and W boson all have a spin of one. So essentially they fall in line with the vector format. We have a one-half spin for up, charm, top, bottom, strange, and down particles, and we have a half spin for electron, muon, tau, tau neutrino, muon neutrino, and electron neutrino. Now, the charges also vary, but they have a pretty interesting interaction with matter around the universe. Uh, for example, we're all very familiar with the electron having its charge of negative one, but it has a very, very small mass. Yes, it has a mass. The muon has a much higher mass, and there were recent discoveries showing that muons can interact with the atomic core, so virtual particles might actually be interacting with real matter in real time. Hmm. It's a lot to unpack and think about. Anyway, this should generally wrap up the basic needed understanding of quantum field theory to get you started. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.